Okay, we have 1122. This is one of Drainage's trucks. And uh, during our setup, we try to go through every department's trucks as best we can. This particular vehicle right here, we when we hooked our plow blade and stuff up on it, we ran into some problems with the actual cranks for the wheel adjustments. This again is a good roads plow, but uh, we, we had to do some extensive work to get this plow working for this vehicle. Of course, these are your markers for your plow. You see your plow blade down here. When Mark gets a chance, I want him to show you this mow board area right in here. You can actually see where the mow board itself is wore down from excessive blade wear and the actual curb itself has curved this around in this direction right here. This bolt right here is actually exposed on the outside edge. So it's not really doing anything but in, in here right now and, and tightened up. The inside bolt is all we have on this corner of the blade. It's real, real important to stay off these corners of these blades and make sure that this doesn't happen. This blade will have to be rebuilt, take extensive time to do so, and refitted so that this bolt will be back in play as far as tightening up goes. I wanted to point that out and to make sure that everybody understands that, that the hookups on these trucks as far as these plow blades go may be in different locations. This one particular truck right here doesn't have it behind the actual lifting plow uh, cylinder itself. It has it here on, the, on this side to the driver's side and Mark's going to show that to you. This is where we prefer that they be put just for the safety part of it. These, these boss plows itself, these good roads plows, my mistake, these good road plows right here are all set up pretty much the same for all of the different the, the, the variations of trucks we have. We have a lot of different trucks. But your lifting, your lifting pin that, that, that keeps the chain from rolling over is right here. You see it in right here. And you, all of your pins and safety devices that you see that, that control all of this, you check behind each and every point. Make sure that these are greased and working properly right here. And basically this plow is ready to go. You just check all, like I said before, you check all of your pins and all of your cylinders and everything that, that has to do with all of the fastens of this frame and the plow to the front of the truck. And then basically we're done there. Okay, what we have here, we have another safety on off switch. Certain vehicles itself have these and certain vehicles don't. I want to point out that this is the easy ore valve that we were always talking about by raising the bed and actually running the pump for the actual brine tank in the back. This tank I have neglected to mention on the rest of them is an air tank and you must bleed these down after every shift that you are on. The valve is located, here's a side valve right here and you'll be able to hear it hissing, that bleeds it down and there's also another one located at the front of the tank right there. So that also will bleed it down. And you'll see a mist of water coming out of there right now. You can actually see the water that builds up in the tank which freezes your brakes up and lets you be sitting while everybody else is plowing. So we want to make sure we take care of that so that doesn't happen. We're at the rear of the vehicle right here where we have a thousand gallon brine tank on the back of this vehicle. You'll notice that when you're around here and you come in to, to take a good hard look at the back of these trucks, you have adjustment legs in the, in the rear, both sides, and you also have a stationary set of legs that are bolted further up in the vehicle itself that hold the front of the tank up for draining purposes and to take it off the vehicle itself. These particular vehicles require you to have a tanker's endorsement, which is a class N on your driver's license. The city of Hampton is requiring employees to have these when you're on snow detail. So this may be something you may have to look into through Mark and his training program to acquire. So with that being said, we're going to bring up the fact that this tank is actually fastened by this bar that you see right here. This bar con controls the locking of the actual tank inside of the housing of the bed of the truck you'll notice that we have uh, lights that come all the way around the bar on this particular model. We do have models that don't have the extra smaller flashing lights. We are looking into getting those put on. And of course your brake lights and 
your backup lights along with all your hydraulic and electrical connections that are required in here. You will see an electrical wire nut set up right here that goes to this unit, your electrical hookup for your lights, and two hydraulic hoses that run this unit. On other units that you're gonna see, you're gonna see a solid piece of rubber that runs all the way across that. These hoses and wires go through a slit in the rubber and hook up. This is a difficult procedure when it's hooked up, especially if you've gotta work on it. So once you get under here and you make sure that all that's straight and hooked up, you definitely don't wanna to have to crawl in there after you've been out there on the road. So it's key to get this right the first time. And the guys on the bridge crew and in our department will do that. But if there is a chance that a hose blows off or something like that, there will be, this unit will go down. It will let you know inside the cab and you will have to get out and check this from time to time to make sure that doesn't happen. I'm gonna get Anthony to crank the truck up at this point and we're gonna show you how each side of the booms and the center boom works. And then we'll also show you the blast unit and then we'll go inside. Okay, Anthony, crank it up. Okay, at this point in time, we're gonna cut on the left boom. We're not, there's the left boom in use. Okay, we're gonna cut on the right boom. Leave that one on and cut on the center boom. Okay. These two booms that you see on in the center, cut the center on. The center boom, cut the center boom on. This boom is for one lane behind the truck. When you're doing two lanes, you'll use the right boom. Can't get in sync with him. And when you're doing three lanes, you lose all the booms. So, when we do Mercury Boulevard, we'll have this Brian truck and two other Brian trucks getting the whole road going down and coming back. So the machine works excellent, just the operator sometimes has a problem. Now we're in the cab of 1122. You'll see the box right here that controls your plow blade up front. It's pretty much a standard type box with the raising and the lowering of the actual plow itself up and down. It's electric over hydraulic. Same thing left to right. And your actual plow light switch right here is, is right here. The actual headlight switch right here that turns it on. Of course, you know all about your gauges, your horns, your turn signals. Your gear selector is on the dash that's located right here. It's push button. The actual brime unit itself is located beside the actual raise and lower switch for your, for your actual dumping mode here. And this is the power station for your brime unit. The streets and roads guys will set this up. We have a certain setting on there that we have to use that gives us per gallon per lane mile. And the actual power switch right here for this is the here and here, that's the master. And these are your three booms. If you're doing one lane, single lane, you wanna turn this, this one off, the left and the right off, and you'll just be using the center boom right here. That's on a two lane road. If you're on a two lane road with, with a median or anything like that, you wanna use your right boom and your center boom and that way you can cover two lanes and cover it and get it over with. If you're on Mercury Boulevard and any of your multi-lane highways, you will use all three booms and go through the process of going through, start and finishing through your box here. Now this thing works automatically. You won't have to touch anything. Now if you're going along and they tell you just do the bridges, what you want to do is you want to come up here and this is your blast button right here and you'll have it on manual right here and and you'll have your switches on and you will push this blast button this blast button will shoot it out for a period of time spray the whole bridge down and you should be good to go you can either go half the bridge one way and half the bridge the other way or hold it on increase right here and it'll spray all the way across the bridge so 
I know that's a lot to take in. We will deal with this right here. Getting it straight, you won't have anything to do, but know which booms that you need to turn on and which power switches you need to turn on. So, with that being said, here's your radio and your PTO switch is located right here that runs the pump itself. So, did I miss anything, Anthony? Fire extinguishers, all your safety gear, and your lights, everything, blue cards, and uh, that'll do it.